Hi, and welcome to your free acting lesson for myfreeactingclass.com for Tuesday, January the 26th. My name is Michael Bean. I started this project in March of last year, and so we're coming up on a year, coming up pretty soon. Uh, and uh, I'm an acting teacher. I've been an acting teacher for uh, most of the last 20 years. I run a school in Vancouver, BC for kids and teens called uh, biz studio and I also teach adults uh, my own private classes if you ever want information on those you can find them in the uh, more stuff uh, link if you just go to myfreeactingclass.com now Tuesday is self tape review day uh, if you're like wait self tape review I have no idea what Michael Bean is talking about uh, well uh, you're in luck uh, you can just go and watch some of the lessons uh, from Tuesdays because they're all on YouTube or uh, you can go to our website, myfreeactingclass.com. There it is. Whoop. Uh, and scroll. Ah, ah, don't click on a thing. No. Um, and scroll down. Uh, and you will see Tuesdays. Download the practice exercise. Email yourself tapes to info at myfreeactingclass.com. So we've got a couple of practice exercises today and then a couple of professional tapes uh, to look at. Uh, and I also want to show you a tape from a Vancouver-based casting director. This was included in an audition that I was asked to go up for recently that I just think is good for context because if you hear me say the same things too many times, it just starts to blur. So I'm going to let you listen to James from k, &K Casting uh, in Vancouver give you the lowdown on how to set up a self-tape. So here that is, let me find James. Hey everyone, James here. Like always, Chris Kerr and myself hope this video finds you and your family safe and well. So most of you are used to doing self-tapes from home, but let's just do a couple tips for doing them at home in case you're new to this. So to start off with, if you can have the best video and audio available to you, because of course, when that looks great, you look great. Another thing is you'll notice here at the studio, we prefer if there's a solid color behind you. Now we know that's not always an option when doing it at home, but just make sure there's not too much color or anything going on behind you. We'd like like you to stick out in your own audition tape. Now something that he doesn't talk about, but I just want to point out because we always talk about it, is eye light or the light that is reflected in his eyeballs. Very important if you're doing a self-tape at home that there be a light reflected in your eyeballs. If there's not, you will look dead uh, and you don't want that. And the nice thing about these demos is you'll notice I'm not too far away. Please make sure you're not too far away as to get lost in the shot. And also you'll notice the video is always horizontal not vertical, like sometimes when you film on a mobile device. The nice thing about these demos is you can kind of see the ideal shot that we're going for here. So we're gonna start with a quick slate. Today's slate's gonna be name, height. We're gonna see those hands, one on each side. And then we're gonna give a fun fact about yourself followed by a 360, just to be on each side so we can see you. I'll go for it. Uh, so when they ask for a slate, which they do not always do, uh, in writing, they will usually say what they want for a slate. This one was particularly detailed, which is, I'm sure, part of why they did this demo. The, listening to him talk, you can tell that he's like an extremely good-natured human, but also that he's gone through this quite a few times. Hi, my name is James Kirk. I am 5'11". Fun fact about me, I'll keep you guessing. Then we're going to do those slides. This just helps us to see a 360 around you. And then ending back in the face. Now, even if you can't do a zoom like we're doing here, if you can get a shot after uh, your slate, a little close up, this is going to be the picture that they see when they click on your audition. Okay. All right. So there you've got the, uh, that's a question that's come up from uh, folks who are doing professional auditions uh, lately, self tapes, who say, well, what if I can't do a zoom out? Like, should I do that weird thing where like I hunch close to my camera and then I like walk awkwardly back and tip the camera down? And he just said, like, if you can't do a, a zoom out, then, you know, kind of don't worry about it. You know, so um, the, if I'm doing a slate and they ask for a zoom out, sometimes I'll just set it up. So that, uh, it's instead of a close up, like if the scene isn't close up, I'll set it up so it's a medium shot. You know, which I can do without like seeing the weird edges of my backdrop or anything like that. Like, and I can only go uh, so far away and still have it look good. And I want it to look good. So I'm like, whatever. If they really want to see my legs, they can ask for a picture. Like, is it an audition about legs? No, it's not. So like, they'll, you know what? They'll be fine. Uh, that's that's my logic. You know, like you you got to make your own decisions on that one. All right, uh, let's jump right into uh, watching the work. You know, so. 
uh, Amy, I think, sent us a, a self tape. Was it last week? The week before? You know, now you get to, and now you get to watch other people's. Uh, and <laughs> uh, and I and I keep uh, you know I keep nudging Christina and being like, hey, Christina, um, you know, look how easy these self tapes are. So why don't we start with the two line ones so you can see just how how easy they are? In fact, look, your your setup today looks uh, quite lovely, uh, Christina. Look at this. You got an eye light. You got a clean background. You're in a medium close up. After class, you could just you could just pick a line and, and record a couple of them because you're already set up here with your camera. Just just throwing it out there for you. Just uh, just throwing that out one. Out. Uh, all right. <clears throat> so uh, first one. Uh, this is from uh, Natalia. Uh, so uh, Natalia has uh, continued to submit self tapes. Uh, she's been uh, really generous in sharing her professional self tapes. Uh, we've seen her do them in uh, both Russian and English. And an exercise that I recommended to her. Uh, about a month ago, uh, some, you know, in December sometime, was to do her scenes in Russian and then do them in, in English. She chose a single line of dialogue and then chose to do that exercise of, that is, uh, the one posted on the website. It's got a bunch of individual lines of dialogue to do it two completely different ways. And so here's two very different ways of the same line. Uh, you can see it's a little bit of highlight, uh, but there is like a nice neutral backdrop. You know, probably you'd want to bring the camera a little bit closer so that we weren't speculating about what this is. Because like, I can't help speculating. I'm like, is that a giant light switch? What is that? Uh, and you want us to be looking at your eyeballs, you know, as much as possible. Uh, and aside from that, you know, it, like this is uh, medium close up, it's horizontal, you know, the background's not distracting, et cetera, et cetera. So really nice here, right? You're seeing um, she's approaching it from a place of total honesty, you know, which is where that exercise starts and where I think we build the foundation of our work from. Uh, the From this place, you can kind of go anywhere, but she's also making that choice about moment before, moment after. She's even um, <clears throat> playing you know, with uh, physicality you know, in a way uh, that uh, right, she's using the frame the eye line here is a little bit confusing because the place where she's putting out her hand and her the place her eyes are looking are different. And so it, it's like she's trying to stop one person but also looking at the other person. So Natalia, when you watch this, you know, I would just recommend um, adjusting the eye line and the hand so they're in the same place so rather than, and I know that you were just using the edge of the frame and sort of being a smart actor in terms of using the frame. Um, but uh, but my suggestion would be you know to place the person there on the side you know and then you know bring the hand into the shot you know in some way that's sort of there in line you know with uh, your eye line and, and that'll tell that story a little bit more cleanly. Um, but that moment before where she's got a strong opinion about who she's looking at and uh, what's happening there that tells the story right that like five to ten seconds before she says the line is still full of story and it was full of physical behavior and so I really see her trying that physical behavior because one of the notes from some of her earlier self tapes uh, has been how still she is. So we get to witness her working on this thing that she wants to get better at. Uh, something that she highlighted for herself when she sent me the email, she was like, you know, now I want to try some like bigger expressive ones. And that's exactly where I would go with notes, right? So both of these were like so quiet and so real. And now I want to see like, can, is that same level of honesty possible? Uh, but with something that's more expressive, you know, that's more extravagant, you know, that is, you know, is it possible to uh, have those, that simplicity and then periodically be like, whoa, and then bring it back down to talking, right? You know, so that, um, so that casting doesn't watch it, say like a whole two minute scene that's all in this like super intimate voice and go, oh my gosh, does that Michael Bean guy only ever talk in that whispery voice? Like, is that all he can do? You know, whereas I think that if you bring in levels, not only are we more likely to hear and see more of what you're feeling, uh, but also 
then casting and the decision makers who watch these tapes uh, will be reassured that you're not just stuck there. You know, that this is a choice that you are making and not just like your always default where they like, they're like, am I just gonna get that guy in the room? And he's just gonna talk like this all the time to me. And it's, Cause that's like, I'm not sure if we want that guy on set. Um, and, uh, and taking the volume all the way down is actually one of those uh, sort of cheats uh, that you can do to make your work more realistic, right? Because when the volume is very, very quiet, um, it's harder to tell the difference. You know, like it's harder to tell whether the feelings are put on, you know, or if they're authentic because everything is so quiet that you just kind of have to lean in. So you can see it's very effective in shaping a realistic performance and really just just a foundation. Like you do want to have access to your full voice in order to tell the stories that you want to tell. Uh, now, Candy uh, also did a single line of dialogue, but she did an exercise that I recommended a couple of weeks ago, and she found a little clip from a movie, and then she tried to copy the performance exactly. So we'll watch her tape, and then we'll watch the uh, clip from the movie, because she sent me a YouTube link, like here's where to go to find the original, and then we'll watch her tape again. That's a great exercise, by the way. And again, just a single line of dialogue. Uh, you can see that you know she's taken some thought uh, into like the wardrobe, you know, and like the ribbon in the hair, you know, and the like collar and the curls. Like these tell us information about story. Uh, they whether or not you intend to, that first impression reads as part of the story you're telling. You know, and so especially with film and TV, you don't want to go too far with wardrobe, but making some small wardrobe choices uh, is influential in people seeing the story that you want to. Uh, that you want to see. Judy Lee uh, once in a workshop said, dress the way your character would dress for a job interview, which I really liked. Um, now, I used to audition for a lot of doctors and, uh, and I've got in the habit of bringing my lab coat and I would just bring it and say, hey, do you want me to put this on? And they would almost always say no, you know, they, because they want to still leave it fairly open. You know, they don't want to see you come in your like camo fatigues if you're going out for a military person because maybe they watch it and they're like, actually, we're gonna cast the dude with hair for the military person, you know, but the bald guy, like maybe he could be, you know, the angry dad or something. Uh, anyway, here's Candy's tape. Careful, Hilly. Fast check the toilet. Don't give yourself away now. And you can see her eyes drifting back to her device where she has to stop. So Candy, one of the things that I would advise now is to give yourself a little bit more moment before and a little bit more moment after. I mean, obviously in the actual scene in the movie, this is a line that is in the middle of uh, a scene of dialogue. So there is moment before, there is moment after. But if you're taping just a single line of dialogue for practice, I'd recommend to like bookend it a little bit and to play a little bit more with what are you seeing and hearing. now. In the movie, you know, and it's great that, that uh, you sent it, uh, the woman you're talking to says something like particularly racist and offensive right before you say this line. So there actually is a great opportunity if you were to redo this line to bring in that moment before. Uh, here is the clip from the actual movie. Hopefully the video comes through all right. Uh-oh. Okay. Hang on. Gonna figure this out. Let's get into the other. Ah, no. <laughs> Sorry, friends. Technology. Ah, so here's the bit from the actual movie, which is the help. Okay, so um, very, so very subtle, right? There's not a lot of movement. There's not a lot of voice here. You know, um, but it uh, but it means something, and you can see it right you know from uh, this first moment. You know that she has a very strong opinion about the person that she's talking to. Right, it's a very subtle you know what she's doing, um, but it does communicate. You know, and so uh, Candy picked a, a great sort of detailed performance to try and and emulate. Um, Interestingly, and I say this all the time, you know, but I think it's worth saying, like, you see how like she got the, the first half of the line and then it cut to the other person's face going, <gasps> uh, the, it's totally possible that that's because that's the moment where the actress forgot her line, <laughs> you know, or that's the moment where she sneezed or that's the moment where she was like, careful, Hilly. Uh, 
you know, and so they cut away to the other person's face and then they bring her in later to do voiceover and like say her line perfectly. Right, like, of course the editor is gonna make it look flawless. Of course you're not gonna see the moments where the actors are like, me, huh, hey, what's that weird thing over there? Your face is doing something straight, mm, gas. Like they're not gonna see those moments. Instead you're just gonna see, wow, like they're so together. Like they're so flawless in their performances because that's their job. That's the editor's job. It is the like whole job of this multi-billion dollar industry to make it look flawless. So it's one of the reasons why I like doing this. I like seeing this, you know, I like seeing the rehearsal. Like I want to help with the, the prep. You know, I, I don't actually watch movies to learn about acting. You know, I watch them to go on the emotional ride, you know, and to like engage you know, deeply with the story and just get like swept up in it. Uh, and so here's Candy's tape again, now that you've seen the original. Right, and so one of the things watching this, uh, Candy, is I would say, if you're going to explore something like this, just play with raising the stakes. Play with like how important can you make it, so that then when you drop it back to that place of utter simplicity, uh, does it still carry the sense that this is like that something big is happening. That this is very important, and so that's the difference between exploration and performance. That when you're exploring it, you you're like, yeah, I'm gonna be loud. I'm gonna be weird. I'm gonna be big. I'm gonna go like, you know, uh, I'm I'm gonna remember that my character is freaking out, and I'm just gonna try saying, ah, I'm freaking out, and then I'm gonna say the line, and then I'm gonna be like, oh, okay, so I can bring in this physical behavior, and I can say this line like, I'm fine, I'm totally fine, <laughs> totally fine, because then my body is telling the story that my words aren't. You know, but I don't necessarily find that intellectually by going like, what does the behavior of I'm freaking out look like? Instead, first I do the exercise and exploration of like, I'm freaking out! And then I'm like, oh, this looks really funny on camera. Okay, I like it. And if I'm in a comedy, then I just was like, no, I'm totally fine. I'm good. Yeah, no, all good. Can I have another cup of coffee? You know, like, and I um, use, use behavior to tell the story that the words are not telling. You know, that... Uh, whether you are, you know, in this little frame on camera, you know, or whether the camera can see your whole body or whether you're on stage, you know, that that is just one of the places where an actor brings in more levels of story than you see on the page. It's a, a fun place to explore. I've got a couple of, um, a couple of other tapes uh, that I would love to show you. Uh, one from a client of mine uh, named Daniel, uh, who I worked with uh, earlier this week. Oh, hey, before I forget, um, Casting Workbook. Those of you who are based in Vancouver and are members of the service Casting Workbook, uh, they have been uh, doing these recordings, these Ask Me Anything sessions with industry professionals, and they've just put recordings of all of them uh, online. And so uh, there are a bunch of great ones here. This one, I would strongly recommend Diversity in Media with Rukia Bernard and Viv Leacock, but there's also uh, Lewis and Kit Casting, which is Toronto, the president of UBCP, uh, you know, Rose Rosen, you know, Marsha Chelsea, Candace Elzinga. So uh, there's a, a screenwriter and actor. Uh, there's a whole bunch of these uh, tape sessions. So if that's something that is useful and interesting for you. You know, there are a couple of things on here uh, that uh, that are just absolutely, uh, that, that are not available, you know, in our archive. So, you know, more the more resources, the better. You know, and if you're already paying for a casting workbook membership, uh, which if you're watching this from Vancouver, probably your agent has already made you do, might as well take as much advantage of that as possible. Uh, so, uh, oh, Candy asked some good questions that I want to go over before I show you these last couple of self-tapes. Uh, she said, um, I was never quite sure where to look when I was recording on my laptop because I was looking at myself on the screen. Do you have any suggestions? Yeah, and so when recording on a laptop, you can do uh, the, you know, uh, like if I'm recording you know, here on the laptop you know, by myself, uh, what I'll do is I'll look at uh, something that's like here on the top bar, right? So right now I'm in Zoom and I can see like the menu at the top. I'm not in full screen. And so there's this, it says help. And so I'll look up there. And so I can, I can kind of see myself out of the corner of my eye, but I'm not really distracted by myself. Now, if that doesn't work for you, you can just take a post-it note 
or something and stick it right here up beside your camera that's pretty close. This is something that came out of a question Claudine asked uh, actually in December is you know she asked about eye lines and, uh, and previously I was using the very corners you know, of the screen you know, and then I realized that I was like cutting off this eye a little bit and I was like oh okay thank you Claudine actually I'm going to bring my eye lines in a little bit closer. So at this point when I'm recording self tapes I use something that is just you know, that far away, you know, that far away, uh, you know, just, you know, whatever that is, what's that, a couple of centimeters, you know, just away from uh, the camera, just to one side or the other, you know, and, and honestly, when I'm recording, what I really like is to um, have a friend there, you know, and so sometimes I'll just, like, put my, I'll, I'll put my cell phone, you know, uh, in one spot to record, and then I'll have the person's face on the monitor, you know, beside them, and I'll look at an actual person, and whenever, like if I'm doing something that's more than a single line of dialogue, if I'm recording a scene for a self-tape, looking in the eyeballs of a person, even if it's digitally, uh, helps me with my performance, right? Because then I'm reacting to things and I'm not having to make the whole thing up as I go. You know, actors, I don't actually think there's like a right way to do that. It's really about what makes you more alive. I definitely know actors who are also like, no, I don't want to deal with what Chris, basis Christine is making. Like I want to, in my imagination, that's more alive. I'm do you know, just for my imagination. Great, great. Like whatever serves you best. Um, but in terms of like, yeah, if you're looking at your own eyeballs while you're trying to like feel things and record, you're making it like really difficult you know, because the challenge as an actor is to like get out of your own head and not be self-assessing while you're performing and watching your own face while you perform. It's like performing into the mirror. Like it's, you know, it's all self-assessment. You're, you're making your life very difficult. Like one of the things that, uh, that I've done previously actually also is just taking a piece of uh, eight and a half by 11 paper and taped it over top of my screen, not the camera, but just the screen. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna rehearse it. There's where I'm, and now I'm actually gonna physically cover the screen because I don't wanna see myself right now. <laughs> uh, so you know, uh, lots of options there, but uh, uh, when I'm recording with just a phone, uh, what I will sometimes do is, uh, right, if the camera's on this end, I'll look at the record button. Right, the, that you know, like the red you know button that's on the other side, because again I can see myself out of the corner of my eye, so I can see if I start to like drift out of frame. Um, but I'm not actually looking at the details of my performance. I'm looking at that little red dot. You know, red happens to be like grabby, <laughs> uh, and uh, imagining the details of the what what I want there in the story form. So it's a great question. Um, she also asked if sending two self tape takes in for an audition is a good idea. Um, she said, or should they be one be more different than the other, like a happy and a, a happy and a negative one? Um, for very short auditions, we've had casting directors and decision makers come into these lessons and say, yes, it's okay to send uh, two takes. Um, some will say right in the breakdown, send one take only. If they say that, of course, send one take only. If they tell you, do what they tell you. If they don't tell you, and it's very short, and you're not going to waste any more than like nine seconds of their time. I just don't see why not. Yeah, but if you are going to do two self-takes, uh, submit two takes for a self-tape, then yeah, you want them to be different. You know, there's, there's just no reason to give them two of exactly the same thing. That's not going to help you. It's going to make you look like an actor who doesn't know how to make adjustments. In that case, you know, it would be better to do only one. And Kendi's last question, which I think is really excellent, is how can you tell which take is your best take when you've worked on it so much they all start to sound the same and blend together? <laughs> Anybody else relate to that one? Because like, I can. <laughs> yeah, like the, you can't see everybody's faces, but there's a lot of hands there. You know, so the <clears throat> uh, that one is trickier, right? Like in the absence of somebody outside of you, uh, you know, how do you decide sort of which one is the best one? You know, and if you've got time. Uh, then you step away from it. Like you step away and you come back. You know? And if you really are still at the point where you can't hear the difference between your speaking voice and that like acting voice that creeps in, then you have a benchmark clip of yourself just talking. It, right? like the, and this is something that I said um, a number of sessions ago, but I think it's useful. You basically have a friend sort of take clips of you, you know, even without your knowledge until you have a tape of you just like, oh, this is just me talking. Like this, you know, or uh, or Claudine, you could just tape Christian like doing random stuff in his day, you know, and be like, hey, you know, what do you have for breakfast? Oh, tell me about these Legos, you know, and then use that as a benchmark. You're like, okay, does this voice sound like that voice? Huh? Why not? Like, I wonder you know, what what is the difference there? You know, so uh, so if you don't have somebody from outside of you who can benchmark and say, yeah, 
that one sounds really honest. That one sounds like you. You can do that for yourself. It's just trickier and you need to get a little bit of distance. And while you're in the middle of it, you're like, oh my God, I've done it a hundred times. Probably not the best time you know, to try and assess because they're just different worlds, right? The, the assessing mind and then the like actor's performance, I'm in it mind. Not, and so, you know, if you can, you know, get a, a second opinion from somebody who's skilled, fantastic. If that's not available, you can benchmark it for yourself, or you can do something as simple as like taking a water break, taking five minutes, you know, uh, thinking about something else, you know, talking to a friend on the phone for a minute, and then coming back and looking at them. And what you're just look, really looking for is that um, does it look like you? Does it sound like you? you know, and then does it tell the story uh, in a clear way? Yeah, so a uh, complicated answer to a simple question, but it's an, it an excellent question because it's something that I think we all run into. It's like, which one is the best one? Uh, all right, oof, 4.30, maybe we'll have to, um, we'll, I'll save some of the these self tapes for later, but uh, let me show you uh, just a, a clip of uh, Dan's tape, you know, so that you have for reference, you know, uh, the tape of somebody who, um, you know, like got coaching, you know, worked with a friend, you know, um, this, he's like a trained actor. He actually has an Australian accent, which you absolutely cannot tell from this tape because, you know, he's really done that work. You know, this is very difficult work to get to the point where you can do a completely believable standard American accent. Uh, and I'll just show you the first little clip because we don't want to give away what show uh, he's taping for. I told him that we wouldn't. Um, so right away, you know, we get character, right? Like, boom, first frame, like we see who this character is. You know, strong opinion, and he's doing it with hair, and he's doing it with wardrobe, and he's, it's nothing too crazy. You know, but the character is written as like looking like a wreck, hung over from the night before. So he read that and he brought that in in a way, you know, like in his body, in his wardrobe, uh, in a way that helps tell the story, right? He's got good uh, eye light. You know, yeah, he's a little bit far away from the camera. Um, that was his choice in terms of telling the story with his body. And you'll see that he moves closer as the tape goes on. Uh, neutral background, lighting is good, audio is good. It's horizontal. Feels like shit. You made a decision. They want me to sell mayo chuck, Dijonais, peanut butter chocolate, two for one disher combos. Fine, I'll do all of it. On one condition. What's that? How about you judge me? Good. Now, um, the. I want you to notice that yes, like uh, much of his performance, you know, is in that like pulled back, stripped down. But his voice doesn't stay there all the time. He still has his, uh, he still has range. He's still allowed to fill it up. Now I would say that the audio on this, his reader is actually slightly louder than him. So my guess is that it's being recorded on a phone, or it's being recorded without an external microphone, because like his voice sounds far away and echoey, and the reader's voice sounds crystal clear. So that's something that he would want to adjust if he was doing this tape again. You can't be serious. You puked me on margaritas on my AstroTurf. I did. Yep. Uh, and you know, the scene can, as the scene continues, if we we're going to keep watching it, um, he comes forward and he like leans on the back of a chair, you know, to like again use physical behavior to tell this story of like, okay, now I'm having an intimate moment with you, right? So it's so uh, we built into the scene as we're coaching it this transition from like I'm back here on the wall. You know, like, I don't care, you know, yeah, you know, to like, hey, like I'm asking you for your help and you know, and I'm here up close where you can see me and I'm just like opening up to you. And we used the camera, we used the frame to help support that story that already had the emotional arc in it. You know, and, um, and so that's an example of somebody with a lot of experience who is getting you know, professional help on this. Um, but, uh, but I think it's useful to have you know, little clips of those in our self-tape review as well. Uh, do any of you have questions before we wrap up for today? Yes. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Hi. Um, really fast. Thank you so much for all of the feedback. It's super helpful. And um, sorry, I'm just having tech issues right now. So I got on late. But 
my question is, um, so you were talking about the, the different takes and I guess um, part of that question is, so the two takes I sent in last time, which were both dramatic and sort of negative-ish type reactions, mm -hmm. would those two be good to be sent in like together or should I have like two more contrasting takes, like a more positive reaction and one of those negative ones, there, I guess. Um, there isn't an answer to that that will work outside okay. context, Candy. If if you okay. are if your one line audition is for a serious <clears throat> show with a serious scene, then doing a contrasting comedic one would not be a wise idea. Okay. Right? Okay. If you are if you're talking about an exercise for class like this, well, then you can do whatever you want, right? Like the whole idea is just to do two takes and try two different things. And if what's interesting okay. to you is to play with contrast, absolutely. You know what I will say is that if in an audition, like you still have to tell the story. You know, right? So let's say your your line is get out of here, you know, and and in the breakdown or in the script, it says that she's very frustrated. You know, the uh, you still have to tell that story of the frustrated person who tells the person to go. You can't say, Cat, get out of here. You know, which like okay. that's the words, but that's not the story. You still have to tell the story. You know, okay. but but you could do the like ferociously like frustrated version. You could do the like, get out of here. You know, and then you could do the like, I'm just sitting here and I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, and it's little and it's on the inside, and I'm like, don't get out of here, right? But they would have to be different for it to be worth sending both of them. Yeah, you know, and if as you explore it, you're like, actually, there's only one way that like I really feel works for me and for telling the story, then just send that one, right? Like, it's not like, you know, you should like you have to or you should stretch to do this thing. It's that. You know, uh, if you've got it available, if you're like, actually, there's a couple of different versions of this uh, that work for me and work for the story, that's when you would you know, um, choose to send two of them. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Of course. Of course. It's awesome. Um, the, and, uh, and Candy, with your next tape, you know, I would love to see with at least one of those takes, uh, you play with being more expressive on purpose. Right, so like, let me hear more of your voice. Let me hear more range, um, even if you're a little self-conscious about it, because that will help me hear what you're doing and possibly give you advice on how to help those things be, feel, sound more realistic. Right, like right now you're doing just the right thing and like playing it safe and giving yourself that experience of success. You know, and then when you're ready to try something a little more expressive, it's possible that we'll learn something in that process that will help me sort of guide your work in the direction that you want to take. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Christina, you want to jump in? Yeah, I won't take long. So for the tape, should I send in like two different like like ways or just one way? Like or should I send like Literally two whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. Uh the what uh yeah I've been asking people to send it two different ways, but like I said, if you do it and you're and there's only one way that you like, send that one. That's fine. Right? Like it's um uh, I'm I'm literally just trying to create an opportunity to practice, you know, and to to lure you into seeing how practicing can be fun. Thank you. My pleasure. It's me. Just quickly, um, Christian, um, he does he's practicing his American accent, okay, which he's quite good at it, but he tends to um, I, I don't know, he tends to over exaggerate I think I don't know whether he talks like an American kid or not he did this um tape can I send it to you just for you to look at it to see oh, what you think love that. yes please yeah I mean not necessarily show it I don't know but, but just so you can see what his American accent's like as a kid from your perspective of kind course. of thing can I show yeah. can I show a little bit of it <laughs> maybe we'll see okay okay Tell me what you think first. Of course, <laughs> um, you know, with the with the caveat that I'm I'm not a dialect coach, right? Uh, no, I know th that there are lots of folks who do that work. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, he has he has got someone in America, but it was just interesting to get someone else's point of view, what they think of it, kind of thing. Um, yeah. And the other thing was, um, was there a class yesterday? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, the I did uh, did Leanne you know not show up? Um, because if so, I will send her a text message. I I wasn't here. 
I don't know, I couldn't get on. I might have been a couple of minutes late, but I couldn't get on. Hmm. Yeah, I'll send her a message and, uh, and uh, you know, just see. Because you know, sometimes Zoom has technical issues. and <clears throat> yeah. people... I didn't know whether maybe there was a different link or, or no, something. No, it's, it's the same link and everything. So um, okay. thank you for you know, okay. bringing it to my attention and I will follow up. Okay. All, All right. right. Then. Thank you. On with our days. Bye. Okay. Thanks bye, for bye. bye. Thank you. See you tomorrow.